All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche Captain Gabriel Landeskog. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Gabe. Um, I, I kind of wanted to ask about how you thought Vegas responded in the in the third with their physicality, particularly the the Reeves play on Graves and the Pacioretty play on Gerard. I don't know if you can call that physicality, to be honest with you. Reeves is – he's on a mission to hurt somebody there in the third, and that's what he goes out and does. And um, I'm sure the league will take a look at it. His intent to injure, and I'm sure they'll look at it. Um, you know, I think uh, overall we played a good game. I thought we, we really set the tone strong in the first and followed it up with a good second. So, yeah. Ryan O'Halloran, in Denver Post. Hey, Gabe, on, on the goal you scored, the first one from the car, how impressed are you that Kale can find you all the way across there? Yeah, like I'm, not, I'm not surprised. I mean, I was just – just try to time it. And I, you know, with his vision and his skill, I knew he kind of saw me. Uh, he made a great play. I didn't have to do much, but put it in. So, great play by Kale. Air 15, Mile High Sports. Gabe, going into the second game on Wednesday, do you guys think you set the right message, uh, not only by scoring seven goals, but by not responding to you know the, the things that were going on in the third period there at the end? Yeah, I mean, listen, we're going to play our game, no matter what the score is, and and uh, you know I'm sure for them they they weren't happy with the way the game was going, and and uh, I'm sure they were trying to send a message for game two, or I don't know, uh, but overall I think we played a good game. It's game one. Um, you know, it doesn't mean anything going into game two. We just got to follow it up and, and do the same thing again. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Gabe, the top line obviously was uh, on fire there with uh, five goals and Kel McCarr had four points. Uh, if you could just talk about the uh, top power play guys and then also as a follow-up, if you could just comment on Nate's, Nate's ridiculous uh, second goal there, please. Yeah, I mean, to answer the first part of the question, I thought Kale pretty great, played a great game. Uh, you know, he was dangerous every time he was out there. And and I think overall, our decor did a great job of breaking the puck out, uh, jumping up in the rush and creating four and threes and things like that. Um, and, you know, it's it's our job to lead the team offensively, and that's what we try to do on a nightly basis. Um, and, yeah, Nate, Nate has a speed burst in his pocket, and he used it on that goal. So uh, beautiful goal by Nate. Rick Sadowski, NHL.com. Hi, right, Gabe. <clears throat> if there was any question about you guys being rusty after being off for a week, you certainly uh, got rid of that in the first period. You guys came out so quickly and carried it through the entire game. Yeah. Listen, I think it, you know rest is is a weapon, and and especially this time of year, uh, we played a lot of hockey, and I think the coaching staff has done a good job managing our rest here throughout the week and, and making sure we're ready to go. We knew that they were coming off a seven game series, a one day of rest coming into altitude. And uh, we want to make sure we had a fast start and we did. Uh, now we got to you know, rest up a couple of days here in between and then get ready for Wednesday. Last one here for Gabe, Brandon Cristal, KOA. Were you surprised that uh, Fleury wasn't in, in net at all? And do you expect to see him now the rest of the way? I, I don't care who's in net to be honest with you. All right, thank you, Gabe. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche defenseman Kale McCarr. Ryan Bolding, Mile High Sports. Hey, Kale, I was just wondering if you guys anticipated some of that physical aspect of the game from Vegas, and, and if you, you know, talk about as the lead goes up, how the extracurricular stuff's going to go on. Yeah, I mean, um, we we know teams' game plans against us are going to be to play physical, and at the end of the day, we just have to match that or even um, bring it. Uh, I kind of put it back on them as well. So um, it all the, all the scrums and stuff, it is what it is. Uh, you know that they were trying to send a message for game two. And I think we as a team know that game two is not going to be anything like uh, the game was tonight. So um, we just have to be ready. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Kale, what did you kind of see on that backdoor pass you made to Gabe on, I think it was the second goal. And can you just walk through that play? Yeah, um, just uh, 
um, I think, I don't know if it came off the boards, the, the first puck or whatnot, but um, no, I just tried to step down and, and saw the kind of shooting lane was um, a little bit fill, uh, full and Landy made a great read to, uh, to go back door and um, I was able to find him. So um, yeah, and then he obviously put it in. So great goal. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. You know, your goal was the seventh of the game and it really didn't matter, but it must have felt good after all the ruts, all, all the rough stuff and you capitalize there. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously such a long power play. Um, us, us as a, like a both PP units, we know we have to stay, uh, stay in tune with it regardless of who they're throwing out, if they're mixing it up and whatnot. So I think for us, um, and especially for me, I had a few, uh, a few giveaways at their line that um, I'll definitely need to be tuning up, but I think uh, overall um, we were we were able to uh, to get to get that one. So. Ron Knabenbauer, Avalanche.com. Hey, Kale, how much of that first two periods and your guys' offensive firepower was you guys maybe having a lot of rest and ready to go versus Vegas maybe having been a bit tired having played yeah. two days ago? Yeah, I mean to touch on what Landy said, obviously rest a weapon, and we knew we had to uh, start have a great start tonight. And I think we did that. So um, it's just going to have to carry into game two for sure. I'll take two more here for Kale. Arif Dean, Mile High Sports. Kale, despite all the rough stuff that was going on there in the third period, you guys obviously sent a message uh, on the scoreboard in, in, in your own way. Could you just talk about the importance of trying to stay away from all that stuff and just stick to obviously scoring goals? Yeah, I, I think for us, we 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 felt it coming, and um, like I touched on, I think in the first question, we we kind of just have to either or match that and uh, just kind of ignore it. So um, they might up it in the next game, but I, we'll be ready for it. And last one here, Peter Baugh, the Athletic. Yeah, Kale is is the way they kind of approach the third. Is is that anything you guys can use as motivation going into the next game and the rest of the series? Yeah, I mean for us, um, obviously. Uh, whatever we were up going into the third, we still don't want to give them an inch. But um, no, we knew that they were going to play physical and we just have to be ready for it. And uh, it's going to be, I think they're going to carry that through their entire game next uh, in the next few. So for sure. All right. Thank you, Kale. Thank you. We'll take questions for Avalanche forward Nathan McKinnon. <clears throat> Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Nate, just overall thoughts about the offensive explosion after the week-long break. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think everyone took it serious, the break. Um, you know, it wasn't a vacation. Everyone was uh, ready to go, and, you know, we had a great start. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Nate, two things. First, uh, can you walk me through the, the second goal you had um, – where you got around Haig, and then also just what was your reaction on the, from what you saw of the Reeves play on on Graves there at then? Um, yeah, I, I just had a, I noticed that he had a, a loose gap, and I gathered some speed below the puck and managed to get around. Um, you know, uh, it was a great play by Donnie to, to kick it out, and you know I, I uh, had the D in a tough spot and just kind of found the back of the net. And um, with Reeves, uh, I didn't really see it. All right, thank you, Nate. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche head coach, Jared Bednar, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Jared, I wanted to ask, what was, um, I guess, just your general reaction to the way Vegas approached the third period and the way they chose to go about playing? Um, not unexpected for me. You know, it's a playoff series, seven games, um, the game's out of reach, and they were going to come and play physical and try to finish all their checks. And and um, so I think it's to be expected. I think our guys knew that coming into it. I didn't have a problem with, with the way they played. Um, when it comes to that, I guess the only play that, that I really didn't like that was out of the sort of out of the context of the game was, uh, the Reeves play on, uh, Graves when he's down. But, but besides that, I think there was some big hits thrown, clean hits. Some of them were, you know, a little high and a little late. I think besides that, you know, I didn't, I didn't see anything that was 
too crazy for playoff time, except I didn't like that play with Reeves at the end. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, I have a couple for you. On the Reeves play, Do you uh, is that something that you suspect we'll see uh, supplemental discipline from, uh, supplementary discipline from the NHL? And number two, that four minute double minor that was rescinded, could you just kind of give me your thoughts on that play and what happened there? Yeah, so, well, he got, Reeves got a match penalty, so I'm assuming that they're gonna look at that. Um, the double minor, they thought it was a stick that caught Gerard. Um, and he was, you know, bleeding. So they right away mark it as four. It's something that they can review. They reviewed it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a stick. It was actually a reverse hit by Pac Shiretti, you know, and it's a, uh, it's a, in reality, it's a, it's a smart offensive play to protect the puck and, and reverse hit guys and, and create space. But he just catches Gerard high and gets him right in the face. So, um, my problem with that call, which, you know, they don't get the, the, to go back and make a different call after it's called the high stick was, it's just hot. It's just high. You know, it, it, I mean, the same rules apply um, when you're going to check someone or if you're going to reverse hit someone, you can't, you can't just get them in the head, you know, but that's, a, that's a play that happened fast. They made the call right away on the, on the high stick and, I thought they did a good job on that. Then they get to review it, but they can't go back and give them two for a high hit after they've already called the high stick. It, I don't think anyway. So uh, I thought the officials did a pretty good job of, of of making the calls. There was a hit we, when we second period Carrier catches a guy in the corner and, and um, they make the call and caught it and tried to keep the game in order. And I think the, the third just gets away because of the score. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Jared, you got to be happy with how your team played after a week-long break, especially that top line with five goals. Yeah, I, I love the way our team played tonight. Right away, out of the gate, skating, relentless puck pressure, um, great commitment to our checking game, capitalizing on our chances. I, I thought you know, the top line set the tone again, but our whole team was, was involved and, and, and playing well and, and skating well. And, you know, our, our, our talk before the game was, we don't want to come out and wade into this thing. I thought, you know, learning from the past, we discussed the San Jose series from a couple of years ago. We discussed the Dallas series and, and, and making sure that we were, you know, using our legs to make a difference tonight. And, um, getting physical in the, with the opportunity and just, just playing to our identity and, and turning it up a notch because that's what it takes in the second, uh, second round. So I, I, I give our guys a lot of credit. We kept playing the whole night, maybe a little lapse at the start of the third, which I think is just understandable. And, uh, but guys continued to check and play the right way, and it, it, it was a good night from us. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, Jared, can you discuss the decision to play uh, Sampo Ranta tonight, uh, and especially paired with Newhook? Yeah, well, I mean, we've discussed Newhook in length already, and Sampo is a little bit of the same. I think um, great college career, goes to the American League, chips in immediately, makes an impact, scores a bunch of goals, has a physicality to his game, um, can skate. You know, Joe and Chris like what they see there, talked to Crow, liked what he saw, and then he comes up and, and gets in our practice. And he's a, he's a young guy, but he's got – he's big, he's strong, he's fast. He, I met with him on our systems. He seemed to understand them. Um, I, I, thought, I thought he was fantastic. You know what? He had a blunder on uh, the, the, their goal um, – him and uh, Berkey both kind of got a little bit lost up there in, in D zone coverage and they, they found the back door. Uh, could have been quicker to recognize that. A little bit of communication would have helped. Besides that, I thought he was on pucks in the offensive zone. He was physical. He skated well. He tracked well, responsible, didn't have any turnovers. I thought it was a real good night from him. Um, when you take in that that's his first NHL game and it's against a real good team in Vegas and, and in the second round of the playoffs. So the moment wasn't too big for him and uh, we're going to need a lot of guys. And I thought the 
to give him a chance at home when I can control the matchup a little bit, see how he handles it. Um, is a good time instead of if, if we lose a guy or something as the series goes on, you know, I could be inserting him later on for his first NHL game. So I, I wanted to get him into this series as early as I can, and then now we'll reevaluate. We'll make decisions uh, for the second game, see how our health is, see how everyone's doing, and uh, we'll dress our, our, the lineup we think will give us the best chance to win on uh, Wednesday. Three more here for Jared. Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey, Jared. How impressed were you with Cal McCarr at both ends of the ice tonight? Well, I thought he was fantastic. Yep. Skating right away. Heads up plays. Defended well. I, I, thought, he, I thought he was fantastic start to finish. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, how key do you think it, Miko after last series kind of said that he felt he should have scored earlier in the series, maybe should have done more. How big is it to get him going with, with a goal early in the first for, for the rest of the series? Well, it was huge. I think you, if you, I, I loved his game for, you know, especially at the start, first period, second period. I mean, it was a horse on the puck. He was hanging on to it. It seemed like everything was happening in slow motion for him. He was finding the open man all over the ice. A lot of heads up plays, defended well, breaks up some, some, you know, rush attack opportunities for Vegas coming back with a good stick and identifying uh, the open man where they look like they're going to slip some pucks into him. Uh, I mean, he made a difference on both sides of the puck right from the drop, right from right from the drop in the first period. So um, I, I I thought that line was really good. He was outstanding. Last one here, Michael Morial, NHL.com. Hey, Jared, two quick ones here. Uh, first, if you have an update on Gerard, and second, was was it at all surprising to you to see Leonard and Nett, and, and did that change anything for your group? Um, Gerard finished the game, so he's he's good. Um, I, I'm not I'm not really surprised they went with Laner. They've been riding two guys all year. Um, it's a lot of hockey, right? You, you you're in a stretch run. I guess if you're looking at it from Vegas's perspective, um, you got confidence in both guys. Fleury's been carrying the load. They, they they're playing important games down the stretch, uh, trying to finish first, same as us. Then they, then they go seven games, and it's a long, hard-fought series. Um, you know, rest is important, and, and they come out in this one after just playing the other night and fighting for that. There's an emotional toll and that that it takes on players, and, and then to jump right into another series, um, they feel good about Laner. He's played well for them this year, so that so they went with them, and um, I'm sure at some point we'll see uh, Flurry back in the net. But doesn't doesn't surprise me they went with another guy, especially you know the way they've been playing them over the last couple of years. It di didn't really change anything for our group. Our mentality has to be the same. Um, you know, there's a couple different points for each of those guys that we address with our team. But besides that, it's uh, business as usual, regardless of who's in the net. All right. Thank you, Jared. Thank you.